Hello, welcome back to the fish locker. Out on the bank, we're in. We're at a commercial fishery down in southwest Cornwall. Called, uh, BK Fisheries down near St. Earth, near Hill. Now, um, I was recommended this place by a local, a local course angler. And uh, I come down a couple of months ago and wrecked it out. And uh, I've come down today with, uh, with my daughter. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to see if we can get some fish out. Now, uh, all I've got is I've got a lobworm just right in the margins on this side, just on a running ledger. And I've pumped a little bit of air inside the worm to pop it up. So I'm hoping for a perch. And on the left hand side rod, there on the feeder rod, I've got a method feeder at about 50 yards. Now, uh, Actually, the place is proving to be teeming with small fish. Now I've caught a few of them already, some of them are rudd and roach, some little skimmers. And just as I was setting the camera up in, my, my feeder rod's gone. Anyways. Easy target. There's a little bream. So we've we've already had we've already had three species and I've only been here about 20 minutes. You know the, um, the ground bait that I've got it's just a uh, generic like, swim steam feeder X whatever it is and I bulked it out with some breadcrumb and I've mixed in here some um, some sweet corn and what I'm planning on doing. I'm planning on doing is trying for a nice perch and a, a nice bream but if a carp happens along then I'll, I'll happily accept it. I'll, I'll be showing you my rigs as I bring them in. I'll be talking you through the little bits of tactics and hopefully I'll be showing you some nice fish. One of the things that I've mentioned before is about when you're making your ground bait up. Now it doesn't want to be too wet. It doesn't want to be too dry. What I do is I, I put it all into a bucket and mix it up. And then I add a little bit of water and then mix it up. And add a little bit and mix it up. And add a little bit and mix it up. Don't put too much in at once. Because once it's in there, you can't take it out. You can always add more, but you cannot take it out. It wants to be your consistency, so you can go it out with it. Just give it a light mash in your hand and it clags together. Like that, so it holds onto the feeder. If it's too wet, it'll be too sloppy and it won't hold together. And if it's too dry, it'll just fall apart. It wants to just be just claggy like that yeah. did have a float set up and I was fishing in the margins but it just kept getting hit and hit and hit and to be honest it was taking all the worms and I was getting annoyed it turned out when I finally hooked one it was Rudd that was doing it so uh, and I've put Lizzie's rod onto a feeder as well so I've got the feeder out in the middle this has got a feeder just over to my left hand side and I've still got that big lobworm in the reeds. Uh, a lot of line bites. What I mean by line bites is, is um, the line that goes to your to your weight and to your bait. When a fish swims into it and hits it, you show a, like a wrap. You can tell it's not a fish because if it was a fish it would give a couple for it to go hold of the bait. Just one, one knock, like something hits the line. What I'm waiting for is I'm just waiting for like the end of the rod tip to hoop over. Now I've backed the drag right off. I mean, I, can you see the? Um, it's called a reaper head on my uh, on my rod rest. I think they're brilliant. You can manoeuvre them all, and you can fit two or three rods on. Didn't slide about. Uh, dead cheap as well. I've backed the drag right off on my rail, so as if a big fish takes it, the end will hoop over and line will just leave. And all I'll do is I'll pick it up and hold the spool lift into it and make sure the hook's set and then tighten the drag as I see fit. Hopefully I'll get to show you. I've been, um, been experimenting with the bait a little bit. 
Now the little fish are just mobbing the feeder. You can see it goes straight away there's a little trembling bite. Yeah. I tried hair ridden sweet corn. It's like four sweet corn on the back of a on the back of a size ten hook. See this rod and left hand side is giving little bites. I'd uh, I tried hair ridden sweet corn and it was just coming back and the feeder and the hook and the hair rig bait getting loads of little knocks nothing was hooking up it was just completely stripping me so I've gone back to hair rig lobworm not like monsters well maybe about that big just hair rigged on the back of the um, size 10 barbless I'll, uh, I'll show you in a second I've just had a real good knock on the uh, on the popped up lobworm inside the reeds the rod fully spun round. I was, <laughs> I was hoping it was going to be a good perch. Any luck, it'll come back round. There was absolutely nothing complicated about my rig. Just got a little hook length of um, 15 pound braid, a little barrel swivel on one end, and I've tied a little hair rig loop on the back with a snell knot there's a little size 10 barbless now I had a lot of success using this in a, in a local reservoir for bream so I've scaled the hooks down a little bit and I'm using them on here and all I do is I've got a little tool a little tool that I made up from a piece of copper wire with a, with a notch cut into it so that I see for instance when I'm using sweet corn just thread a couple of sweet corn on on some tool like that then hook it onto the little notch Hook them to a little notch like that and then slide them down onto the onto the loop. Just like that. Then all I've been doing is cutting a little piece of stick, putting it in the loop. Oh, oh. Something on the left hand side of the well, Lizzie had just got back from having a cup of tea, she'd only been back <laughs> 20, 30 seconds. Yeah. What was the bite like? Uh, the rod almost like, tipped into the water. It just, just went. Tip just hooked straight over, just lifted straight into a fish, and it was um, a lovely conditioned bream. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the. Um, let me just hold that there a second, please. Yeah. That's the beauty of these hair rigs is they look, offer a fantastic hook up just like that. It's always just somewhere in the lip. That's all it was. That's it. That's your uh, your first proper bream, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. That'd be that'd be maybe three pound. A nice fish. So I'll just uh, just going to take it to the next swim and let it go so that uh, it doesn't spook the swim that we're in. Yeah, cracking result. And that was just on, all it was was just a little method feeder like that with like the little 12 inch hook link with a, a size 10 barbless with a hair rigged lobworm. Simple. I've got, I don't know if you can see just in the corner of the shot, This, rod here. this has got my lobworm popped up just in the reeds. And I've just had two real good hits on it. Now it is a big lobworm, it is like a and I missed I missed a fish a minute ago. Rod pulled right round when I lifted into it. Two real good like real good fishers tubs. And it dropped off and I only got half the worm left, so it obviously had it had the worm in its mouth, just didn't have the hook in its mouth. 
So I'm wanting whatever it is. I mean, it might only be a small perch. I'm wanting whatever it is to swallow it. Get the whole worm in its mouth. Oh, wow. Well, it's not a perch. <laughs> it's not a perch. Oh, look, the hook's just falling out. But it is a massive roach. What a corking roach. And literally, that was the rig. Just a little bullet lead sliding around. And a big lobworm. Just fished on the hair rig. Now, now you might say, I've pumped air into this. I'll show you how to do that in a second. That's a cracking roach. Give him a little bit of water there. We'll get a photo of him because he's probably a pound. Let's have another look at him. What a stunner. Not the perch that I wanted, but I'll gladly take it. Something up on the feeder. If this is a roach, it's a PB. Is he? Come here, please. Yeah. Well, that's definitely a PB. Look at the size of that. What an absolute beauty. I would say by the shape of the fins and the shape of the mouth that it is a roach and not a hybrid roach rud. And what a stunning conditioned fish that is. Definitely gonna have to get a weight on that, that is a corker. <laughs> Net. Come on the scales at one pound six ounce. Absolute beauty. Another nice roach. This one's got some lovely colours on it. Like a, a ginger chin. Again, another stunning fish. This wasn't supposed to be a silver session, but it's shaping up that way, isn't it? And again, as before, all it was, it was just method feeder. I had a little hair rigged worm on there. Oh. I've missed more fish down there in that corner today. Painful. 
<coughs> all I've been doing is been rigging them up beforehand. Oh, there again, look. Rigging up a couple of these heavy globworms beforehand. So as soon as I bring one in like that, all I have to do is just snap it on. Snap it on with the snap tool. All I've been doing here is I just mash a little bit of ground bait around like that. Make a little depression with my finger. Lay the lay the worm and the hook inside the little depression. Mash a little flat piece of ground bait like that. Just put, put the two together. This is a lot of bait. This is a lot of ground bait. But what I'm doing is instead of keeping free feeding little handfuls, I'm using big method feeder baits. I could use little baits and keep free feeding little balls. But I'm just putting them all together like this. Working all right. When choosing where I was going to fish today, usually when I get to a lake I'll have a little bit of a walk around any venue. I'll have a walk around and have a think about what I want to do. I wanted to target perch so I picked some areas with some reeds on either side. And uh, I think what looked like a deep bit in the middle. But um, also I've got the wind in my face. So my logic being that any food particles on and around the top layer of the water because the wind will be blowing the surface, they'll end up down this side. The only negative of that being is I've now got the sun right behind me. So, as you can see, I'm keeping quite low to try and keep my shadow away from the water, so I'm not scaring the fish. Looking around, every single time I chuck a piece of ground bait in, or every time I cast in, even when you're just looking about, there's just shoals and shoals of small fish, like this size this size now uh, they're taking look at that it took took a lobworm greedy thing just loads of roach and rud now, uh, the method feeders you can see as soon as they're hitting the bottom just like trembling bites and like knocks but no hookups so what I've done is I've switched to a float and it's just a very crude bobber float. I haven't even bothered making up a separate hook link. I've just been using the same hook length that I've been using uh, on, the, on the method feeders. Apart from I've added this one shot. And these bobbers, I like these, they're just dead simple. Not very sophisticated, it's just a bobber. And I've set it at about two feet. I'm not joking, <laughs> instantly I've had like five little roach and uh, just lost a little perch as well but it was only, only like that big so I'm just, um, just working my way around the margin areas with a, with a bit of worm on float hoping that there's going to be a perch hiding there somewhere there's just too many little fish if I if I, if I wanted to if I could scale right down I could, I could bag up on silvers on little Little roach and rud and probably little skimmers as well. But I'm after I'm after the big ones. Right, we're still just getting plagued by these uh, these small roach and rud. They've um, completely depleted my worm stock. This is literally my last decent lobworm. And I'm just going to show you how I pop them up. Now this is just a normal hypodermic needle. I'm getting from. Getting from boats, getting from where, doctors, wherever you want to go. Yeah, and all you do is just put a little bit of air in it like that. And you see, look, I've just rigged the worm, just hair rig style. But I haven't gone any further than that saddle. And then all I've been doing is you just kind of, just ease the needle into the worm. Without sticking it into your finger. 
and just gently pump a little bit of air in it and you can see the worm getting fatter all I've done there is just pumped a little bit of air in there I'll try it on the other end as well and you're blowing it up like a balloon now look. see it getting fatter that air in there now inside that fat lobworm will pop it up I mean it's not going to make it float like a float but it's not going to sit on the bottom so I'm hoping that I can put my, bait, put my weight down and the worm's going to be sat up like that hopefully it's going to get us a perch but if not what can you do the um, this fishery, BK Fisheries, it's owned, guy, owned by a guy called Billy. Now he's um, he's well known in the course angling world. I, I didn't really know about him until I'd come here, until I'd met him. And he's um, definitely a character. You can hear him on the other side of the lake talking to some guy. He's um, he's great like that. Come out and talk to you and spend time, give you a little bit of advice. I mean, after all, it is his lake. And... Um, there's two there's two pools to fish here. There's Bill's pool, which I'm in, or Billy's pool, which is more of like the um, the match lake or the kiddie lake. Now look, I'm gonna put my fat worm. You can see there, look, where it's full of air. I'm gonna put it on on a sliding ledger just down here in the reeds, and I'm gonna uh, make up a little bit more ground bait. See if I can't pick up another bream or something and uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, the perch. Yep, you guessed it. Another nice roach. They are lovely conditioned fish, but not what I am after. This one was on feeder with sweet corn. It's another bream. About the same stamp as the last one. Now you can see just in the corner of the mouth. And it was just single piece of sweet corn. This has been the general stamp. I've got about, got about 10 of these now. They are, uh, they are a shoreline fish bream. So when generally they come into an area that's what you'll be catching, which is what I'm happening now. Well, <clears throat> I'm just using up the last of my ground bait. Just using up the last of the ground bait. And I ran out of worms a while ago, so I'm just using sweet corn on the hook. It's another stunning roach. Really are some cracking silvers in there. Absolutely fin perfect. I didn't come here with the intention of catching catching roach today, but I tell you what, they're, they're stunning. I think we've got about another, another half an hour fishing, and then we'll have to make our way home. No perch, but got some stunning fish. PB roach, one pound six ounce, but just over. We've had, uh, I've had about a dozen bream. Lizzie had three, I think I've had about a dozen. Biggest one was actually Lizzie's. Lizzie's bream of about three pounder, maybe three and a half. It's getting put back.
Yeah, she had, um, she had the best fish, biggest fish. Uh, we've had rud, roach, yeah, rud, roach and bream. Um, I have lost a perch, lost it. I, I saw it turn on the surface and, and threw it the hook. It's just all part of it, isn't it? I might get a chance to show you another fish, if not. I hope we've, well, we've shown you it. Just simple methods. You can come to where, uh, come to a water. You don't have to be. If you're a saltwater angler, you don't have to be put off. You don't have to feel intimidated about trying something completely new. I just keep it really simple. And uh, there's no reason we can't have, can't have some good fun catching fish. Like I say, this spot it was uh, it was recommended to me by by someone who lives down here who fishes it quite local. I um, I'll come and try it again in the summer. We do have two lakes. This one, this one's got mixed species in. The other one's just got carp in it. Yeah, I think I'd stick to this one.